All right, so hello, hello everyone. We are excited to welcome all of you to our leader call. Um, we are Arlena Gafford and Jennifer. Uh, so this is a leader call. It's not sponsored by Avon, but we really wanted to open it up and just have a chat um, about our leadership business and open it up to all leaders in um, the Avon world. And so we're going to talk about ideas and feedback um, and we want to hear from all of you. Um, and we've got a couple topics. So first, Jennifer is going to share a couple roles with you so you'll know kind of how we are going to run this today. Hello, everybody. Thanks, Arlena. <laughs> Um, so same format as we have done in the past. Just a couple of things we want to make sure and cover. Again, number one, this is not an Avon sponsored call. Everybody understands that. Um, number two, please keep your responses brief, two to three minutes, um, so that we're considerate that everybody can get a chance to talk and share their ideas. Um, no personal questions, which, you know, a lot of us know that if you have personal questions about your account or representative, you want to make sure and take that to your upline or to Avon uh, customer service and let them help you with that. And then um, we want to stay positive and encouraging um, about our businesses and about Avon as a company. Of course, we want to share valid concerns if they are there, but we don't want to bash our company. And then that's it. Let's have fun. Are y'all excited? Okay. So we have um, leaders from all levels joining us today. And so we went back kind of to the basics on our topics. And I think even, you know, for those of us that have been around for a long time, these are still good topics that we want to cover and maybe refresh on ideas every once in a while. Uh, one of the big things um, that was released to us in an email the other day was that the free signups for Avon has been extended until the end of the year. So can we get a woohoo for that? <laughs> woo that is awesome. So with that also was the um, free or the advertising, the nationwide advertising for recruiting has also been extended um, for the end of the, uh, into the end of the year. So we wanted to just share, first of all, some ideas of how you are inviting people to join you in the business, um, how you're marketing that, um, maybe some tips or tricks around what's your, how you're having success with having new people join you in the business. So Arlena was going to share a tip real quick, and then we will open up the floor for you guys. Okay. So, um, a couple things that I personally do, um, each day I try to reach out to new people that I don't personally know. And I do that through social media and have been doing this for, probably a couple years now. Um, so what I will do is either look on some of the yard sale groups where people are selling things so you know they're either wanting to just declutter their house or earn some extra money. Um, and I will private message them and let them know that, um, so like a little script that you can use. Um, hey Jennifer, I know we don't know one another, but I'm looking to expand my business and wanted to see if you are open to earning some extra money. If not, no worries. And I just go through and try to do like five to 20 people each day, three to five times a week, um, because it's a way to reach out to new people. Some people will, re will respond to you and some people don't, but, um, and it puts the, it takes the pressure off when you say, if not, no worries, or if not, no big deal or no problem. Um, and so that's just one thing that I do off and on for, like I said, a couple of years. And I have recruited some new people. So um, I'll just take some of the ideas that we used to do in person and look at how we can do it online. Um, especially this year, we're all having to pivot with a lot of our business um, tasks and how we run things. And so that's my biggest tip. And just doing a couple every day um, and keeping track who says what um, or who you send a message to is really good too. So you can follow up. So that's my tip for, <laughs> for this month is to prospect new people that you don't know. Mm -hmm. 
Well, and, and I think that kind of is a spin on, I don't know if you, any of you around ever went up to people like in the parking lots, we called it parking lot recruiting, when you would um, like go up to somebody and probably scare the crap out of them with a brochure and say, hey, yeah. would you like to, would you like to be an Avon customer, an Avon representative? And when I've talked to some of my newly recruited girls about it, they're like, you walked up to total strangers? I'm like, yes, I still do that. Um, but you know, this is just kind of a different spin of doing it online. And I do that the same as Arlena. I have a, uh, just a blank piece of paper that I keep track and I write the person's name down and how I recruited them um, so that I can go back once a week and just do follow-ups. Hey, sorry, I haven't been busy. Haven't heard from you. Um, and I look for like my favorite TV shows. I recruit people from my favorite TV shows because I know we have something in common. Um, buy, sell, swap, or trade groups. Um, you know any common interest that you have be careful in groups that you are active in like a crafting group or a cooking group because if word gets out that you're um, prospecting people you can get kicked out of those groups so be careful i um, in those kind of groups i like to go to pages like one of my favorite shows is 90 day fiance i know it's trash but it's good <laughs> And so I go to that page and I, and I just, you know, find people that I'm interested in what they're saying and I comment on it and then I send them a private message. So that's just a tip from us. So anybody else have some great ideas on how you are inviting people or maybe marketing your business um, to join you during this free sign up? Well, I will share that. Um, yes, I remember those days of parking lot recruiting and so grateful we're not there anymore because ultimately it's about building a friendship first and not going straight into business. And so my last three appointments in the last month, one has been from a leads group, I'm in the Chamber of Commerce in my area. So it's from a leads group. Another one <clears throat> is a friend, it's funny, because I've known her for a year. And we just, because physical distancing, we need to be more socially connected than ever before. So I have been intentionally calling people and how are you, what's, what's going on in your world, you know, kind of thing. And, and so here we are a year later of this friendship, and I always say, my business, my business. Well, the, she finally says, Mary, what do you do? So I left the element of surprise there. And mm -hmm. so come to find out, she sold Avon 10 years ago. So when she started engaging me and I started asking her questions, because it needs to be about them, not about me. Yes, I want to grow my business, but that's not what it's about. It's about you. And so once I shifted that mindset, it made a huge difference. And then the other one that I have that's coming this week, she was my former boss from 10 years ago. She found me on the Avon site, but my last name was different. And she says, I knew that face, but I wasn't sure if it was you. And I didn't say a word to her. She says to me, as we're having breakfast and getting to know each other on a different level than a boss employee, and um, she had ordered Avon from me, so I brought her her order. And I put the recruiting flyers in every brochure. And so she says to me at the end of breakfast, hey, so do you think I could really do this Avon stuff? And I started asking her questions. How much time do you have? Like, how, like what are you looking for? What do you want it to do for you? Because we ultimately, when we help somebody else, it, it can, we cannot not help ourselves. But if we make it about us first, about growing our business, about what we want that customer, then they will go farther away as I've learned in my journey. Yes, 100%. I like to share something. Hi, I'm, I, I was invited to this call here. Let me make sure I got my mute up here. Yes, minute. we can hear okay. you. Go yeah, ahead. I'm, okay. Um, I was invited to this call by Dawn um, last night. So, um, but I wanted to bring up as far as recruiting goes, uh, Christmas time, I did a vendor show at a church I've never done a vendor show at before. And turns out one of my old classmates from high school attends that church. She and her husband stopped off my table and they bought a bunch of stuff. And then let's see, back in, uh, there's a story behind this one because, so sorry, excuse me there. Um, um, last month, the beginning of last month, she was like, hey, um, I was thinking about um, that show that you did at Christmas time at my church, and I decided that I want to learn to do what you do. <laughs> okay, oh. so, then, so then, but then she had to go to Florida because of her mom's situation, and then because of going to Florida, she ended up having to self-quarantine for two weeks when she got back uh, from Florida. Two days ago, she signed up, so I have a new team member. 
Yay. Yesterday, I spent three hours onboarding at her place, <laughs> teaching her everything she needs to know about Avon. She is so excited. She's ready racking up customers. When I did the, uh, when I created the graphic on Avon, now it says, uh, it says, uh, I joined Avon, woohoo, and then put her picture in it, posted that on her biz on her page, announcing her business. She says she's already got people asking her questions about it because she tagged a few people in that post. We're now saying, I've been looking for an Avon rep for a long time. Oh, I'm so happy you joined. And she did all kinds of customers already. And she That's didn't even cool. favor yet. Yeah, I definitely think that, you know, helping them build that excitement is a great way to set them off with success. And, and building those relationships, vendor events is something that I've had a lot of success with, um, with bringing in new representatives too. Mary, did you have a question? Oh, she's clapping. I've never seen these hand emojis before. Go ahead, Debbie. <laughs> I was actually going to say, um, sometimes just you showing your excitement, excitement on the social media platforms is when you will get people commenting. I've had that happen, you know, won a couple of trips and my cousin calls me out or DMs me and is like, you know, what are, what are you doing? How can I do this too? And I think that just showing your excitement. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and she's excited about placing her first order. She just messaged me this morning. Hey, can I get that free set? Well, uh, if I order two of the new um, hair styling gel creams, and I said, or I said, well, if you look at your brochures that I gave you, you could do any chi purchase for thirty dollars to get that because I gave her samples out of my hair color kit yesterday. Mm -hmm. I loaded her up for samples and everything, mm -hmm. and so um, since I had the full size bottles. I kept the smaller bottles from the hair color kits uh -huh. and I pulls out as samples, you mm -hmm. know, when somebody's really, really interested. So I hooked her up with both of the chi, the main chi products, the shampoo and conditioner. Also gave her up one of those propylene uh, hairstyle of those hair samples with uh -huh. the, the four different things in it. And she was writing down the, each one of those on the sample card using a pen, writing down That's what cool. order she could use those in so she could try each one and decide which one she likes better. And then she says she's gonna be promoting the H-E double hockey sticks out of it once she uh, decides <laughs> cool. which one she likes better. But right yeah. now, it sounds like she's going toward Chi. Oh, yeah. Anybody have any marketing tips um, that you're maybe doing on social media? Are you using the, um, the Google, uh, what is it? The Google search keywords. Is anybody having success with that? Um, any tips on how to make that work? <laughs> We're open to those, but any online oh, success yeah. as far as marketing going? I've been getting customers because of my Google, my business. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, I got a customer that was rather irate at her current representative. And so she Googled Avon and seems I'm the only team member. Seems, seems I'm the only one that has the Avon Google account, mm -hmm. you know, Google yeah, those Google business. pages are very handy. Those can be very handy. So, Angelique, were you going to share? Yeah. Um, well, you mentioned it, but I, last weekend I I spent time doing all of that, trying to figure out that ad word thing, but I didn't get very far. Um, and um, but I did find something on Nextdoor, Nextdoor business advertising, and it was fairly inexpensive, and it reached like a five to ten mile radius of your neighborhood and it showed how many you know how many people potential people it would reach and um, I did that and I did Yelp and I did Google my business I set up the, the Google business the free thing that they had yeah the Google page yeah but I haven't I just did it so we'll see we'll see how that works <laughs> Anybody else, any success with like your Google pages or um, Yelp or any of these things? I have several reps that have used Nextdoor and had some success with that app. Um, if you're in a, a more metropolitan area, I have donkeys and cows as my next door neighbors. So it's not going to work too well in, the, in Texas country. Is Sharing? Nextdoor like oh, go ahead. Uh, Google? Is uh -huh. Nextdoor, is it like Google? Nextdoor is actually an app, from what I understand, um, where you connect with people in your local community. 
Um, and then I'm guessing Angelique, they have like a kind of like Avon, you can do or Facebook, you can do ads is, is the next door kind it's of a, like that. It's, a, it's called next door business, next door for a business. And you have to have a, a whole business page, um, which I didn't realize it was anything different until I started clicking around and then it said you could advertise. And I was like, Oh, and then when it was like, um, I think $29 for a month. Mm -hmm. um, it was fairly, and then it got less. That was for like so many more miles, but it got less if you did less miles. It was fairly oh. inexpensive. That's interesting. Does anybody have success with like Facebook ads or um, any kind of ads in that realm? Have you found success with any chemistry there? I have not. So. Using social. Avon Social to post consistently on all of your platforms and making sure you remember those hashtags. That's what's been working for me. Are you just posting um, like product pictures, Mary, or are you posting like the recruiting pictures, anything particular that you're having more success so I'm, with? I'm doing the 80-20 rule. And so I do 20% about product and 80% about inspiration and hope and um, like for example on this morning at seven I had scheduled on the business Facebook page for um, for the new product and it's funny I drive an Equinox so I can remember Equinox. <laughs> that's the only way I can remember it because I drive a car like it anyway and then I shared that post to my personal page and said something like you know be sure to like our page we have lots of solutions for you because again it's all about them mm -hmm. and so i i schedule the post at 10 a.m normally on the business page and on my personal or my customer vip closed group page at nine every day but once a week is about recruiting and interesting i was in my chamber um leads group last week our digital marketing guys uh, did the presentation. And something they said really stuck with me, and that is a lot of times what we do is we post one and done, but how many ads on TV do you have to see before you actually even start inquiring about it, right? Mm -hmm. So he, what he said, which makes so much sense for us, uh, so much sense, is, and I'm gonna do that starting next week, is three times a week I'm gonna post the same thing. And, you know, I took a, a market. Oh, go ahead, Joanna. Go ahead. It, it, this is, it's really kind of funny. Um, you probably have seen this post, but um, our local uh, farmer had posted a picture. Uh, it was a video, actually, of him eating corn, fresh corn. And we hadn't had fresh corn yet. And he's sitting there and he's talking about this corn and he's taking a bite of the corn on the video. And he, I'd seen him, like you said, two or three times. And I'm like, I've got to go there and get this, this corn. I could taste the sweetness that he's talking about. So you want to talk about the power of a video talking about a product instead of just posting a picture of a product. If he would have held up that corn and said, oh, this, you know, posted this tastes so good. That does not do the justice as me sitting there sharing this going, oh my gosh, this smells like an almond latte. It's the smells of fall. It's just such a difference. So that simple um, post from him led me to go get two separate times now corn from him. Um, and I'm able to leave brochures there. So it's a new business, but it taught me a lesson too. I post a lot of just, you know, Jen, you're really good at your videos and you getting ready in the morning. I don't, I've tried that. It does not look good. So I'm not doing that, but I commend you for doing it. But I can certainly be passionate about a product. So I learned that it really is about a video as opposed to a picture because mm -hmm. we have such passion and he did too, that people can't see in your post of just a picture. So it was a valuable lesson. I told him that. I said, I'm here because of that video you made. He goes, people just need to put their words out there. <laughs> so um, I have a, going off of what you said, Joanna. So does anybody do videos about recruiting then, about becoming a representative? Mm -hmm. Because that would be an idea. And yeah. not to say that we can't just do the post too, but yeah. to have a video to talk about that. 
Well, and I think too, the other thing is, um, you know, there's so many people right now and, you know, I don't know about anybody else, but my numbers could certainly take a rise in their numbers from where we used to be. Yep. <laughs> um, and I have really been intentional two weeks ago about fundraising and just reaching out to everybody that said, we've had to cancel our event. We've had to cancel our event. I have four fundraisers for fire departments running right now. Um, wow. it just, you know, they are looking to raise money. I mean, they've had to cancel their bingos. They've had to cancel their street fairs. They've had, and I don't know if you guys have these things in your area, but I've just really been intentional about reaching out to people when I see that they had to cancel an event and it's made a difference. They are so appreciative, but I will caution you. If you are not honor society or Rose circle, be careful how much you donate back because if the order's over 60, you're paying that $8 fee. So, you know, I think it's about 20% if you're not, you know, if you're not President's Club or Rose Circle that you can donate back. But even so, it's a great way to get your name out into the community and to help these groups that are desperately in need of money. Yeah. Well, and I think it puts you out in front of other people that may want to make extra money too, right? I mean, that can be a recruiting tool also. So that that's a good point. I hadn't thought about that with fundraisers. And I was going to say, um, I think off of what Mary was talking about, about consistent posting. I did a virtual training with the independent trainer the other day, and she was talking about like in your groups and even on your business pages, your people need to hear from you. And so she recommends four posts a day. A 7 a.m. post should be like an engagement post, um, a question, um, you know, what's your biggest skincare concern? What's your favorite type of ice cream? Anything to get people communicating. And then at 10 a.m., do a product post or a video. It could be, you know, your favorite product of the day, what you're loving. Um, and then at 4 p.m., do another post about that same product and the benefits that it offers. And then at 8 p.m., do a post about your opportunity, what it's done for you, what it's done for people on your team or, you know, friends here. I mean, I could share that, you know, you know, my friend Diana has earned several unex un all expenses paid trips. Um, from Avon because she's a rock star and she loves her Avon or she loves her business. I'd love to share more information with you so you can be a rock star like Diana. It doesn't even have to be your own stories, but sharing mm -hmm. stories of other representatives. We all know someone that has, you know, been able to leave their job or been able to, you know, buy groceries or pay an electric bill and just sharing things about the opportunity. And once we started, my team and I started this challenge two weeks ago, because as Mary says, I wanna do it before I share it. And we have seen a huge difference in our business pages and our uh, groups in engagement. And that started conversations, which has led to recruits. And so we're seeing an increase because of that system. So anybody else with ideas um, on recruiting or tips that are helping you? Go ahead, Deanna. I was just going to comment on the Facebook Live for like intentionally recruiting. I think that um, when you're doing your Facebook Lives and you're posting on Facebook, like all the ways Avon is positively enhancing your life, that is like a recruitment post because people mm -hmm. see you having fun. They see you earning prizes. They see you, you know, um, I always try to do the hashtags and like, even if it's just me at the park eating and filling out an order or something, um, it'll be like work from home or, uh, boss life, join me, you know, stuff like that. You have to, you can put those in your regular posts, but people are watching you. So if they see what you're doing and you're posting positive stuff all the time, about your life and your business, they want to have a piece of that. Like they want to, you know, they want to do that too. So it doesn't have to be like an intentional, I guess, I guess what I'm saying, it doesn't have to be like an intentional, you know, oh, we, you can join Avon, it's free, blah, 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 you know, wow. kind of roundabout. Yeah. yeah. Like this is the lifestyle, you know, show the lifestyle. 
See, I like that because, um, and I think even with the products, um, doing the same thing. So last summer we had a gym membership to the Y and I would just post um, pictures, um, like a selfie with the Bogard. Um, I think the Gentle Breeze is the one I had and just shared how, um, you know, my Bogard or my sunscreen had Bogard too and that we were at the pool playing and I just shared that in a couple of my groups and sold <laughs> products and it was just a two second take a selfie pose and then go have fun and play at the pool with my son. So I think some of the lifestyle um, posts and videos and things like that is really helpful. And I think we lost Jennifer. <laughs> she was freezing. <laughs> so, um, but we will um, go to um, the, so one thing that we wanted to talk about, let's get her back in. <laughs> Hey, Arlena, real quick for you, move yes. on. Uh, just, just remember, everybody doesn't always join Avon for the money. You know, mm -hmm. some people just need something for themselves. You know, they want to get away from their kids. They want to, their job is stressful. You know, there, there's all different reasons why they join. So I think the, that's where I think the lifestyle posts are important. So like right. if you're a mom and, and Avon has allowed you to go on a school field trip or whatever, you know, share that. And, and make sure you hashtag like work from home or boss life or, you know, any of those working recruiting hashtags. I want to call Deanna out um, like publicly here for those of you that are friends of hers on Facebook. <laughs> um, she is the queen of indirect prospecting because it doesn't matter if you see her picking up her food or you see her sharing a meal with a friend, she has an Avon button, she has an Avon face mask, she mm -hmm. has, I mean, she, there is no question, even in her personal posts, you talk 80% personal, 20% professional, um, there is no question what she does for a living and how much she loves it and how much fun she's having. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes too, for those people who are a little more cautious about getting out there on social media and just being direct about it, um, I think that there are some indirect ways that you can that you can be successful as well. And I just want to tell you, you do a great job with that, Deanna. Yes. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you. I always play spot the Avon in Deanna's post. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, where's the Avon at? Because you are excellent at that too. Yeah, I agree, Valerie. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I try. <laughs> <laughs> So the other topic that we had today that we wanted to cover was, and I know this is probably something that we all have struggled with at one time or the other, is helping those new representatives get to the qualified new recruit level. Now we know Avon standard is $150 um, and then they are considered a qualified new recruit um, for you to earn your bonus. But for them to earn their bonus, that is a $200 level. And so we've all kind of agreed collaboratively that um, we are shooting for the $100 because it's not about us making the bonus, it's about them earning their bonus. And so we wanted to discuss some ideas that you enroll new representatives um, and help encourage them to get to that qualified new recruit level. And Roger, did you have a question? You're on mute. <laughs> Actually, I have a comment on what you just said. Oh, okay. Um, my new recruit that I was onboarding yesterday, uh -huh. um, I made her a deal because when she saw the brochures, I printed out a whole page of, of the uh, um, labels. I used Microsoft Publisher, created some labels for her so she gets an idea what to put on the back of the brochure. She goes, oh, man, I'm going to have to get a stamp now. So I said, you know what? I'm going to tell you what, Rebecca. That's my new recruit. I said, I tell you what, if that first order of yours is $200 or more, you better start watching your mailbox because I'm going to order you that stamp you want. Yes, I love that. And you know, Amazon, mm -hmm. with free, if you're a Prime member, you get free mm -hmm. shipping and I can get them for like nine bucks. I've, I've used here. that one too. That's a great one. Same here. Yeah. I, I get them for like 10 bucks or something on Amazon, you know, something like that. And so... As soon as I see her two hundred dollar mm -hmm. order or more, um, then I'm going to mm -hmm. be going on Amazon and order her a stamp because I told her to be watching for it and shoot for that two hundred. 
So that yeah. she will get and, and I agree with you. I just shoot for the two hundred. Yeah. I mean I mean, what good is it for them to hit the hundred and fifty if we get our bonus if they're not getting their bonus? So yeah, I love um, that. I love that. Arlena, did you I, I have some things around this? No, I was gonna let other people share. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah. So what are you doing to help your team or your new reps? I was actually being frank with her yesterday. I told her, I said, okay, here's the deal. This is why I was telling her, I said, if you do a $150 more order, I get a $20 bonus. And I was being straight out with her because I believe in being straightforward with my, with my team. Um, I said, if you only do $150, I get, the tw I get a $20 bonus, you don't. But if if you do a $200 order, we both get a $20 bonus and you're going to get a new stamper. So I like to lay it out there, let them know exactly how things are. Yeah, that, that's good. That's good. Anybody else? What are some tips that you use to help people get to that $200 level or maybe even with your onboarding, getting them into the pathway to premier trainings? I know we've talked about this before, but um, the their own personal order, like what do they use converting their products over to Avon so that they can have their own testimonial about the products so they know what they're, sh you know, then they feel more comfortable sharing about the products. So, you know, what were you going to go buy at Walmart? What were you going to go get at CVS? Um, you can get shampoo at your own store, you know, and start building their own uh, what do we call that? The first order, personal, personal first order, personal care. I forget what it was called, but basically family first order. Family Essential. first order. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, I think that's a great place to start, especially with the variety of products that we have available now from the laundry room to the bathroom to, you know, just everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Joanna, do you still use your trick? Okay, share it. <laughs> I knew you were gonna, I knew that's what you were gonna ask. So um, I love doing the 40 and four with a new recruit. Um, it's 40 prospects in 40 minutes, and it's just your uh, family, um, relatives, you know, who do you work with? Who do your kids know? And you literally, like, if I can get them on the phone, it makes such a difference. So while we're talking, getting to know them on the first call, um, I send them the 40 and four first and ask them to print it out if they can, and if not, to have it available with a sheet of paper. And I pause for four minutes and tell them, okay, this is the time where you write everybody down, fill the sheet out. And once they're done, then I go down through the list with them and ask them who the first three people are, which is family, and ask them to explain who they are, where they work, how they know them, what businesses, what associations do they have. And I show them how to take that 40 and turn it into 80. So then from there, I ask them to put a check mark beside everybody that they know they could use additional money. And then I ask them to tell me why they thought that. And then I help them with the words to use on to reach out to those people on why they think they would um, be a good candidate, why they could use some additional money. And those are the words we use, additional money. You never ask anybody to, to sell Avon because nobody wants to sell anything. But what about sharing the benefits of our products with other people that you know could use additional income too? So that works really well. And then um, the fundraising, you know, I, I like to let them know about sales about the family first order, um, having team members and fundraising all at the same time. So it just plants those seeds so they know that we are more than just products, that we have a lot more that to offer to somebody coming into the business and helping them think of it as a business if they have that mindset. Yeah, when Joanna first sh t shared this with me a couple of years ago, I was like, girl, that is, we are never gonna get them to do that. And it works. I play the who do you know game. I tell them when I get them on the phone, I want to play a short game with you. It's I call it the who do, who do you know game. So get out your pen and paper. I'm going to call it the category, put down the first five people that come to mind, and then we're going to talk about that list. And so it works. If you can get them on the phone, that's been my challenge lately. <laughs> well, yeah, me too. I think the other thing is too, like with that list. So, you know, if they can get 30 people, let's say they only get 30. And I like to tell them an average order is $20. So that's $600. And I have them write that down on the back of the sheet. And now, so you have them take that times the um, 
25% that they're gonna earn and show them that if you get this amount, this is what you're going to earn minus your, cause you know, they got it minus the shipping, minus the books. This is what you're going to earn. And if they can earn two, $300 by that, they seem to be more engaged to get to that number because that's the magic number that they need to get to, to make what they need to make. Yeah. Jessica, I know you have some kind of rock star online onboarding system. Share it with us. I do. Um, well, I have like a, a <laughs> email through constant contact. So um, every few days, my team members will, my new team members will get emails from me, just um, to help them, you know, get started. So it talks about the back office, setting that up, you know, the free shipping on $60 orders, how to, um, you know, set up their Avon social stuff. Um, what else do I do? What else have I told you that I do? <laughs> just watch your, I just watch your story is where you're talking about all the fun things you're doing. I'm like, I want to be cool like her. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, you mean all my stories on, um, Instagram and Facebook? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those, those are fun. I just love sharing, you know, what I'm doing, what our team is doing. Um, I'm just so, you know, you guys have always talked about, um, project broadcast. So I decided to start doing that and have that in addition to the emails that I send out. Um, so I'm working on putting together like, uh, uh, you know, every couple of days, a text message to be sent out to my new team members just to help them along in their first and their second orders. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool. Roger said he also includes the memory jogger and the 40 by four in his welcome emails. Um, and so I think that memory jogger is helpful, helpful, especially if they don't have a network of people. So that is on Avon U. If you guys didn't know that you can search memory jogger at the top and you can print it out or save it and send it in your welcome emails. Roger's having good luck because he's sending kegs out to them. It says. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending what? I'm sending what out with them? In your in your text on the side, it says you're sending the welcome partner keg. You're sending kegs out. <laughs> well, you know what? I I had, I'd call that fat fingered syndrome. <laughs> yeah. uh, because I do not I do not like uh, using my phone buttons because I have big fingers, so I call it fat finger syndrome. But what I do is I include the forty by four. And the uh, memory jogger is part of my welcome packet uh, that I print mm -hmm. out for every new recruit, you know, and explain it to them. And she, yeah. my, my new recruit, while we were talking, she already had half of that page filled out while we were talking yeah. of, of what she was, uh, people she was going to contact. So I know that works. Mm -hmm. How many and of you would say jogger, that you actually, yeah. I'm sorry, how the, many of the you would say, also works. yeah. How many of you would say that you actually send a welcome packet when someone joins you in the business? Are you, is anybody still sending like brochures and forms in the mail? Is that, no? I so need I to do and it just, I was spending way too much money, mm -hmm. way too much. I now send them an email with everything in it and then I PB them, give them a text, letting them know that I just sent you this information and try to get the conversation going that way. And then if they want something in the mail, I will. Because a lot of them don't, they're not there to, to sell by brochures necessarily. Some just want to sell them. So it's, you don't want to waste your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is Regina. Um, I do send a welcome packet, but I don't send brochures. I send a welcome letter, um, an information sheet that has their account number, district number, just some general information as far as um, supplies, like for bags, if you need to order, how much the brochures cost, um, as far as signing on, just in case they didn't go through the process of really going through and um, to check out Avon U, things like that. And I put the memory jogger in there, the pathway to Premier Flyer. Um, a lot of times I found it kind of helps with a lot of reps because some of them don't really read the emails. I can't get them on the phone, but as soon as they need something, 
they, they got my packet because my business card was in there, things like that. And then they will, in turn, then, you know, then I'll get a call or a, a text message or something. Oh, I received your package. And a lot of times I'll send a, a text also saying, I'm sending you a packet. Um, when you receive it, please let me know. So a lot of times they will respond if they've received it. And then that kind of leads in that I can talk with them because I have a hard time sometimes getting people to respond back on the phone or either to call me. So mm -hmm. I have found if I say, look, when you receive the packet, give me a text message or call or let me know you've received it. So that kind of helps. And I spend, the packet cost me $1.20 um, just to send those few little pieces of paper. And um, that's just the investment that I make that I find that works for me. Because if I can't get you, if you're not going to answer my text just by welcoming you, you're not going to answer my emails, you don't answer the phone. Usually if I send that and say, oh, I'm sending this packet, then they will kind of respond a little bit. Um, you know, or if they don't respond right away, when something goes wrong or they don't know what to do, then I get a call or a text message from them. So. Yeah, that's cool. I'm sorry, what? Hold on. Were you going to say of... something? Yeah, what I do. Uh, okay, I, I, I'm starting to type it in the chat box. So, uh, but anyway, what I was saying is that um, if, the, if it's a local person, um, a new team member, this local person, I print out the welcome packet. I include the uh, four by four, the memory jogger, a welcome letter, um, instructions on how to place their first order um, online, you know, through the Avon now. Um, and then also how to set up their e-store. You know, I also include a flyer for the pathway to Premier, you know, and any incentive flyers that we got going on for us reps, you know, so, um, but if they're local to me, not only do I print that out, I give a five camp, five books from the, the next campaign and the campaign after that to get them started. And I just yeah. recently started uh, including a whole sheet of uh, labels for brochure labels and something else I just started doing and my newest recruit thanked me for it is that I send uh, the welcome packet, the, the paper part of it, I send that to them in email as well as a printout because sometimes the printouts get damaged and they can always go back to their email when that happens. Yeah. I think a lot of people have gone paperless too. So I, I've kind of found that too. Um, Jessica said in the comments, I have also been doing a business launch training every month with my team's new reps. Um, everyone gets an invite. The business launch training covers everything that I send. In my new rep emails, it takes a few times of hearing things before it sticks. I also offer a pack of goodies of samples when they fill out the 40 by four and share a photo with me. Um, that's a good idea. That's like a reward Great for idea. doing the, the activity. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Anybody else some great things that you're finding success with, um, with onboarding new reps and helping them get to that Q&R? Uh, to bridge on what Regina said, something that I do is, because everybody's walking around with their phone. We know they have their phone. We know they're getting text mm -hmm. messages, whether they answer us or not. So the one thing that I do, and we got these last year, um, you know, is I used to use these for the $150 order just to send them out something that had Avon on it. And that was pretty, um, you know, it, it got some attention. But I send them a text message and say, hey, I just sent you an email. Would you check your email as soon as possible and make sure it didn't go to spam? And please respond. When you do, I'll add an extra gift into your, you know, when you place your first order. If they're going to do something, usually they respond, they go check and say, yes, I got it. And then at that time, I can let them know, you know, make sure you check your emails, you know, daily. Avon sends out, um, welcome emails in the beginning i will be sending you a few things as well and i don't want you to miss out and then it kind of lets them know that's the way that we're going to communicate and then you can ask them how do you like to communicate text you know because everybody's different some mm -hmm. don't even look at their emails mm -hmm. you know and they'll tell you that they'll say i don't i don't check my email okay well how would you like to communicate you know and i yeah. think it helps a little bit and it's not always successful but i've ha i have had more success that way Oh, yeah. Um, I will say that just a tag on that. Um, the text is works great. Um, I send the welcome text 
I send the, you know, the pathway to premiere and the calendar, and then the picture of the free bundle, the free products they get for placing their first order of 60 or more. But you also, I also do email and then I have a card sequence that they're going to get four consecutive cards from um, send out cards. So they're, they're welcome. They're just regular cards in the mail, but I include like business tips and frequently uh, FAQs. Then they'll get another one of easy ways you can market your business now, you know, just some, some different things, ideas that I've done over the year. And it has like pictures of that. So, and those they get like, they get one right away. Then they get like one in five days and they get one a week later. So it's like four different contacts because people need like, I think someone else just said several different touches, you know, to have an impact. So the email, the cards and the text is what I do. Yeah. And I say five times, it takes five touches for someone to either be a customer or to do business with you. Yeah. And it may be, we may be finding the same with our team members. That may be why we're, if we're reaching out a couple of times and then we quit, that may be why we're not getting the response that we want. Anybody else with some awesome ideas of helping them get to qualified new recruits or enrollment? guys are quiet. <laughs> Arlena, go ahead. Shoot. Oh, go ahead, Dawn. Um, I will just share that something that worked for me just this week was um, because I have my Zoom meeting once a month. Well, actually twice a month because I've added the power chat from this group. But anyway, um, we sent the reminder email to removed reps as well as the regular reps to invite them to the zoom and last night i had two responses from removed reps they could still you know reinstate themselves but they responded you know with different questions uh just because they got that zoom that's interesting mm -hmm. i thought so too yeah you know, to even oh. echo on, on that, it's interesting how they do not respond to an email I send, but the Power Hour email or the newsletter or something else, that is what will finally grab their attention. So, yeah, it's so true. It's crazy. Okay, so um, one thing that I do, um, I try to reach out to removals every couple months just because I know life happens and it's not like Avon's not their main focus every day um, to just see if I can help them. Um, and sometimes um, I'll just send a simple text that says, um, would you like to hear how you can come back to Avon for free? Because they don't realize because in the past, you know, what every, it was a way shorter time. Um, but if they wanted to come back, they had to pay the enrollment fee to come back and now they can come back. And so I've seen some really good success just doing that. And I don't do it all the time because I don't want to overwhelm them, but I try to do it every other month, just reach out personally to them. Um, and sometimes you just hear that they've had life happen and they really just I mean, just some sad stories on what's going on, but um, I've gotten some reps back and now they're selling, even if it is just $50 and it's a personal order or whatever. So that's something that I do for removals every once in a while. And then I'll add them to, um, like Dawn was saying, on some of the emails, I'll just say everybody <laughs> that's in my back office and I'll just send them that message out to everybody. Because again, you never know when they're going to actually open up your email, what's going to trigger it for them. Maybe their life is okay for a second where they can look at it and then they want to do whatever that's in there. So that's what I do too for removals. It's something that I do um, for all of my new representatives is I've created a YouTube video um, that I just filmed, filmed myself um, just doing the top highlights of becoming a new representative, welcoming, welcoming them to the business, um, covering just briefly Pathway to Premier, 
um, and I do it on like a Zoom, and then I, you know, show them how to log in to Avon Now and how to get to Avon U and just, you know, set up their website. It's like 10 minutes long, very short, very precise. I got this from Emily. Um, and then it's private on my YouTube channel. And so every time someone new joins Avon, I send them a welcome email and I attach that video. And then I also send them a welcome text and I attach that video. Um, and so I can tell if they've watched it because I can tell how many views I have because it's private. <laughs> so, um, but that has been helpful for a lot of my new reps um, to be able to click into this video. It's me talking personally. It's not professionally done. Um, and they feel connected. And so that has been something I've used over about a two months now, and I've seen some success with it. So anybody else got some last minute awesome ideas that you wanna share with us before we close out today? Rosario, you've been quiet today. And Ms. Sharon? It's another quick question. It's it's a kind of what you said, Jennifer. Um, you said it's a private video. So does that mean people only people with the link can access it, or mm -hmm. how? Do, so if I go to YouTube, I won't see it if I don't have the link, or how does that work? No. Yeah. So I have a YouTube channel. So I think Joanna said a while ago. I do my makeup every day um, on Facebook. And then I convert those to YouTube videos. And so I have my YouTube channel that has all of those videos on it. But I also do things for my team. Um, and I set them as private. And only the people that you send the link to can actually access those videos. So I don't want like my customers that are watching my makeup videos to watch all the new representative information. And that's why I keep that private like that. Cool. I didn't know you could separate it out like that. So that's good to know. Yes. Yeah. Whenever you go to publish it, um, it, it says like public and it'll say private only people with link. So just choose that. That's how these videos are done too from these trainings that we have. Oh. Um, and so then you can just copy that link anytime you need to send it to them and it stays there. And I think I need to update it because things have changed. So you probably want to update them every couple of months, but it's been really helpful to for me to not have to say that same thing over and over again just to send them that quick video and they can watch it from their phone. You know, before we end, I just want to say I think this um I think this call was really good. Uh, even I took notes from the thing like how often do we just like forget things that other people are doing that really just are so simple that we change things because maybe it's not working. But if we were just mm -hmm. to stay consistent, like the 40 and four and continue to do one thing, it's amazing what happens. And if we could just get half of our team to do the same thing and be consistent with that one thing that works for you, like the 40 and four, you know, I think that's the biggest thing is we try to change things up because things sometimes don't work, but it's not that they're not working. It's that the people aren't working because we know the business works uh -huh. sometimes if we do, <laughs> depending uh -huh. what's going on in the world. So I just want to say thank you for doing the calls. And I can't wait to share this one with the leaders and with the team. I mean, not just leaders, but I think the team in general can just take so much from this, this um, call today. So I just want to thank everybody. <laughs> Thank you all so much for sharing. I agree. I think if we've got to find a system and stay consistent at it, because it's not necessarily our system that's broken. Sometimes it's just the not not the right people coming into that system. So I think that's that's a good pointer. And is everybody registered for Avon Convention? Are you guys excited yes. for the training and the information that we're going to get? I'm hoping for some big announcements. They usually Amazing. wait for convention for those. So. Um, Hopefully we'll get some more whenever we, we have that here in a couple of weeks. And make sure Maybe you're giving away a new car. We have that um, survey thing to fill out. Oh, what was it? Yes. The fascination thing. What was How it? How fascinating yeah. are you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> did did y'all do that? Time. I was like, how did they know me so well? Dang it. <laughs> All right. Okay. All righty. So, anybody uh, have any idea? When, one question. When the logo store is going to open? Wasn't it supposed to open yesterday? Have y'all, has anybody gotten into it yet? 
Okay. I just I'll, heard the sweet. It's not there. I went looking and it it's not there yeah. yet. Okay. Last I saw was Michael Sunstack said it would be sometime this week if all goes well with wow. the technology. Yeah. Okay. Let's pray. Everybody, please pray that this conference goes well and that technology works and we can win a new car. Somebody said that. I'd love a new car. So let's all pray. <laughs> all righty. Thank you, guys. Okay. And our next call will be September 2nd. Um, same time, same link. Um, and we'll definitely probably cover um, whatever we hear from um, the conference. Um, on that one. So if there's anything, um, we'll probably touch base on it, I'm sure. So thank you for coming and sharing ideas. Um, bring some more ideas next time too. <laughs> we want to thank hear you. you. It, yeah. And if you guys have any topics on the all leaders call that you think we should cover, please share them with us, especially since your teams are coming in too. Um, we want to make sure that we're covering topics that are helpful for everybody and their leaders. Thanks, guys. Right. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Good job.